welcome back to In the Can. We have Matt Ross with us. He is the director of 28 Hotel Rooms. And uh, welcome back, well, first of all, to Utah. I know you're, uh, you, you've done some work in Utah. I've been to Utah There's before. There's some connection with Utah. Yes, yeah. and to Sundance many times. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But this is, a, you're, you're here, as a, you're, you're, you're an actor, a well-known actor, done some great work, but you're here as a director mm -hmm. and uh, the film 28 Hotel Rooms. Tell us a little bit about the film. Well, actually, I directed a short film that was at Sundance a while ago. Right, too. that's right. But um, the film is, um, I would say, a portrait of a relationship. Um, that is an affair um, over uh, an undisclosed period of time, but probably around 10 years, that all takes place in hotel rooms, mm -hmm. and there's only two characters in the whole film. And there's apparently 28 hotel rooms. There are exactly 28 <laughs> hotel rooms. You got the title right. In fact, when we submitted to Sundance, it was 29 hotel rooms. <laughs> That's that right. was the title. But then we cut a hotel room, and it became 28 hotel rooms. I was going to say, originally the film was called 38 hotel rooms, but, you know, editing and all that. That probably. would have been, yeah, <laughs> a, a, long, a much longer version of the movie. Yeah. Well, tell us about the story itself. I mean, <clears> you know, it's obviously a character piece. Two, yeah. two main characters and their affair over 10 years mm -hmm. and just that the evolution of that. Um, well, from a director's standpoint, and coming from an actor's perspective too, yeah. I mean, tell us about your process there. Well, I've written a lot of other things that were um, really not designed to have a lot of improvisation in mm -hmm. uh, screenplays. But this film uh, specifically was very much a collaboration with Chris Messina, the lead mm -hmm. actor, who's a friend of mine. I had written a script for a friend of ours, um, and he was. Uh, it was about a character who was drunk the whole movie, and my friend had just been in like four movies in a row playing mm -hmm. drunks, and he's like, you know, I don't know that I can do this. I'm ready but to what, sober uh, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about Chris? And I was like, that's a great idea. I showed Chris. Chris and I talked about it for a while, but he kind of wanted to make it a slightly different movie. But it, it started a conversation with us about movies we've been in as actors, um, ways of working or, or ways that we haven't been allowed to work, mm -hmm. things that we're a kind of process we're interested in. and. Um, I had this idea for this movie. I really wanted it to, to, to make a film about a relationship. I was really interested in just a very, simp the very simple dynamic with two people. Um, and so I sort of pitched him the idea. We talked about what it might be. And then he went off to make a, a big movie, and I wrote a screenplay. And then when he came back, we workshopped it in my apartment in Venice, mm -hmm. California, yeah. not Italy. Yeah. Sadly. Sorry. I know. <laughs> budget, um, budget wouldn't allow. I know, sure. it wouldn't allow. Yeah. <laughs> um, for about eight months, really, while we were both doing other work, um, he would come in and we would improvise around, playing both parts. What if they said this? What if they said this? I, I would go home and rewrite it. Uh -huh. So the script really evolved naturally and organically. You yeah, know? a very um, three-dimensional approach to it, too. I yeah. mean, it, it, and then uh, we brought in the actress, Marin, and, and continued that. And then we did that on set. Mm -hmm. We shot... Um, Almost consistently, we shot 20-minute takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I was really interested in doing, and this is um, certainly because I'm an actor, um, with this particular project, I thought it allowed for this kind of way of working. What I was really interested in doing is creating an environment where the actors were not required to deliver a performance mm -hmm. between action and cut. What happens a lot on movies is that there's so little time and so little money, even on big movies there's so little time, mm -hmm. it takes so long for the mechanics of the machinery to get going mm -hmm. that the actors get to set and, and, and really there's no time for discovery. And I wanted to create an environment where there was no right and wrong that they could change the narrative however they wanted, and I would figure it out in the edit, you know, and, and um, I wanted to capture the unrepeatable and the happy accidents and all mm -hmm. those things that, when things are so tightly controlled, you rarely have time to do, and I, I just wanted to, you know, to see if I can find something that was authentic. And yeah, this this process seems to be very fluid too. I mean, you know, as an actor, you understand the power of momentum of of being in the place of not having a lot of speed bumps and walls thrown up, and yeah. you know, the fact that a twenty minute takes, you know, to, yeah. to, to to most people would think, well, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But at the same time, as an actor, that's probably such a luxury that many people don't. Yes, get Yes, what well. happens a lot is, in addition to not having enough time to really play, is that um, you there's. There's very little time given to discovery because everyone's worried about capturing what you already have, right. what's written, you know, right. what's already pre-planned. Uh -huh. And I think that's certainly legitimate. You know, you have to do that. But there's something also very beautiful by to, to giving the actors the opportunity to literally stop in the middle of takes and mm -hmm. just say, you know, I want to work that line over and over and over and over again because I'm not. I'm. It's almost like um. You're teeing up for something sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like there's a moment you're like you're crafting as an actor, and I'm waiting for it to happen. And sometimes you're not in the moment, and because you only you, you don't want to screw it up, you want to make sure they get it, and yeah. you're overly concerned, and you're not in the moment. And I like I wanted them to forget that they were being filmed. Do you understand? Every actor that's watching this now wants to now work with you. 
please come and work with yeah. me. <laughs> I mean, it, I it, no it, you, it does kind of beg the question, though. I mean, you, you started out with a script, and obviously this script was something that, you know, morphed into this and that and the other during the process. Yeah. You put the movie in the can, was it exactly what you expected it to be? No, the movie changed. I mean, we edited for almost a year. I mean, it was very much like, you know. Yeah, I was like, thinking as you were talking, I, I could hear your editor's eyes rolling. You know, with, with, with <laughs> they, they all the like footage you were shooting. I mean, it, it's yeah. not a documentary. I mean, I guess, you know, I heard Ira Sachs, a wonderful director, say mm -hmm. yesterday that he thinks every movie is a documentary. And in a way, that's true, because you have this preconceived notion of what the film is going to be. Then you show up and see what you get. Right. And we did that. Um, to a very intense degree because we had 49 hours of footage or something for mm -hmm. a movie that's not even 90 minutes. And, you know, so over the time, it was really about finding the movie. Mm -hmm. um, that became the challenge. We rewrote the movie in the edit room. I don't know. I, don't, I, I lost track of how many drafts we had. We had various versions of the movie because you'd follow these narrative strands and be like, well, if we're following the strand where he's talking about that with this, mm -hmm. then that affects it. You, the, everything impacted everything else, and you have to make editorial decisions about what you want the movie to be. Make it a miniseries. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that would probably even be harder, actually. I don't know that people would want to stick through 72 hours of two people in hotel rooms. Yeah, well, you'd have to probably add hotel rooms. Push that concept yeah. about as far as it could go. Yeah. Well, w let, let's talk about you know you're working with the actors. I mean, we we talked about uh, you know some of the process that you have in making the film. So your actors show up. Mm -hmm. They've got their they've got their pages. They've memorized they, their, lines. They memorized their yeah. lines, and then you just kind of say, well, here's A and here's Z. I want you to get there. I mean, talk about well, your process I, in working, you know, hand in hand as an actor with actors. I think what I do is just sort of see. For, we've, we've read through the script a lot and talked about it. Right. We haven't had table reads where a lot of other people are watching, but we've talked about it a lot. Then we put it on its feet a little bit, and mm -hmm. I sort of said, you know, go wherever you want, and just to get them. They knew each other. They had been in a play about ten years before. So, so they already so had, they had already that connection had there. And that was Good. something that was really important to me. I didn't have to manufacture a connection. Mm -hmm. They knew each other. They were friends. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really easy. We already started from a great place. And when you get to set, what I like to do, and I think I'd like to continue to do, whether or not the movie has improvisation or not, is sort of see what they're going to do before I tell them what to do. Right. You know, they're interpretive artists. Let them interpret. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I may not have to say a word, which would be lovely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, let them find their way. I mean, we really shot this movie. Um, I really wanted the performances to dictate the camera, not the other way. I mean, I think there's a real legitimate way. You know, people like Danny Boyle, who I worship, mm -hmm. you know, he has crafting his imagery. You have to do that for mm -hmm. the, this kind of film. For this kind of film, it wasn't required. I wanted to see, so I'd see where they we show up and set. Um, I'd clear the set. Um, they would, we'd spend as, however long it was required to for them to sort of get comfortable and see what they want to do. Then we'd sort of. Um, decide how we're going to shoot it. Um, I had storyboarded the entire movie, but realized pretty quickly that those were um, a lovely fantasy because mm -hmm. we couldn't get in to scout the rooms before we got there. So mm -hmm. every hotel room has a bed, a bathroom. Sometimes they have little kitchenettes. They're essentially the same, but the challenge became how to make them different and right. how to have the camera movement both reflect what's happening on with the performances, but also what's, ref what's refle to reflect on what's happening thematically for each scene. So it's not repetitive and each one has its own kind of um, you know, feeling and aesthetic, um, and then and then it's just you know when you're shooting these long takes, I, I would clear the set a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the it became a running joke where it's like the room would be me, the DP who's the camera operator, Doug Emmett, wonderful, wonderful, talented man, um, and like the sound guy. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of different sound guys because they kept on getting union jobs where they get paid a lot more, and they right. would be like, "What's your name yeah. today? It's a new one." Um, <laughs> and you know, and it, that would be it in the room. And um, I really wanted them to forget that they were being filmed. So mm -hmm. we would shoot and shoot and shoot, and I would, we would sometimes I would suggest things. Frequently, I would suggest things while takes are going on. You know, um, some actors don't like that. Um, I understand that. It mm -hmm. feels a little bit like someone's grabbing well, it's your more, head yeah, and moving it, you. But, but a lot of us, you know, have grown up in that kind of theatrical setting where yeah. you're, you're almost directing this as a stage play in a lot of ways. Yeah, in a way. Uh, just yeah. In, in the style and sure. the ambiance, you know, sure. with not a lot of people there, not a lot of production. Uh, you're, Except you're trying for the 10-minute gun battle. That was not like a Well, play. you know, that, you know, that's we, we won't give that away. That's not the airplane away, the helicopter, yeah. no. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one last question. I, you premiered the other night at the Yarrow. I'm always very interested in hearing what directors take on audience reaction. I mean, you get so close to a project, yeah. you sit down with an audience for the first time. Uh, were you surprised by anything? We had screened it to, for friends and family at, during the edit process because it was such a long one. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
thankfully I had been through that experience before right. because it was jumping into very cold water. For me, it was kind of a blur and it was sort of like being in a car accident. They say that opening night for an actor on stage, the same amount of adrenaline goes through your body as being in an actual car accident. I felt that. It was just like my heart was, I was so nervous that I couldn't, I couldn't enjoy the experience. Um, mm. I hope they enjoyed it, but I mm -hmm. couldn't really enjoy it. Um, I've since then calmed down a little bit. Um, I, li I really, really enjoy the Q&A, yeah. but I don't so much enjoy, I, I, you, obviously you make a movie to share it with other people, mm -hmm. but I don't know that I need to literally share it with them. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know yeah. that I need to literally be there because you're just so conscientious of, are they liking this? Did they get that? You're just riding You'll the wave You'll drive yourself crazy, your head will explode. You, 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 you want to create good art and hope that it resonates yes. and hope that it and finds home somewhere. And I love talking to them afterwards. That is great joy to yeah. share with them because that's, then you're really having a dynamic back and forth. Well, you got more of it coming up this week, so we get do. ready for we that. Do. Yeah, and hopefully there's not as much blood. Not less blood. Uh, yeah, as, less as, blood. As, as a car accident. I mean, less, the adrenaline's yes. a good thing. Yes. So, a car accident that you swerve and make it out alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody made it out alive, too, yes. and that's yes. another good sign. Uh, Matt Ross, thanks for joining us. He directed 28 hotel rooms uh, showing throughout the Sundance Film Festival 2012. We'll talk uh, more about this film a little later, and uh, we'll be back within the can after this. Stay tuned.